I think purpose was becoming more and more relevant. I think that the, the issue, though, being that um, I saw this nice reference from the WFA uh, that said, is purpose putting lipstick on a pick? And I think most of the time, I think it's not. Most brands don't really get it right these days. And I think that's probably the issue. So I don't think purpose has had its day, but I think brands are just not getting it right. I think the rushing into kind of the purpose revolution of sorts and, 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 and being uh, too too quick. I think the, I often talk about how um, I often see purpose as a sort of two-headed purpose monster. So on the one side you have profit, profit, profit and the other side you have purpose. And I think for brands really to get this right they need to align those two things and that I think is just so difficult and I think even if you look at a, at a company like uh, like Unilever that is probably still kind of the poster child of any purpose discussion uh, I do think that they are on their way to kind of get those two things better aligned but I think for a lot of organizations they don't get that right and and and, and the way I look at purpose is uh, it's very much based on a very kind of strong sustainability foundation. So I might be a little bit different from a lot of the traditional advertising guys in that sense because I do believe that purpose needs to be kind of built from within. So it needs to be built on a kind of strong, solid foundation that's built on pledges and it's built on action. And that's, uh, and that's tough work. And I think a lot, of, a lot of brands don't get that right. And I think most of the time it's because we as an industry are stuck with short-termism. It's about sales, it's about the next quarter results and, and purpose is a long, tough directional pull in a different direction. It's, it's a kind of you know, leading star. So I think that's why especially agencies and CMOs that only sit in, a, in the seat for that brand for a couple of years have so much difficulties in getting this right. Um, so so I think if we as an industry has to build these, and I think it's an exciting opportunity to build brands that are relevant, that, 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 uh, that uh, connects with people, that, that uh, has a positive contribution to society, uh, we've got to change the way that we work as an industry. So what makes a successful purpose strategy? I think it's really about getting that foundation right. I think it's really looking at, uh, at your brand and your organization uh, from a, uh, uh, just take a very kind of honest look at your, your organization and look at the good and the bad stuff that's happening. And I think that is, uh, for a lot of brands, that's uh, <laughs> difficult and, 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 and challenging uh, thing to do. Um, to look at your business as what are the negative impacts uh, that you have. So I think the, the getting the, the right foundation is, is, is pivotal to success and I think the other thing I talked about, the two-headed purpose monster, getting the profit and the purpose side aligned is, is, is super, super difficult. Uh, so I think those two are, are, are very important. And, and then I think the third point is really that I think purpose is evolving in the sense that um, if, if you look at most brands today, if you look at the, let's take the, the beer brands, you know, I'm from Copenhagen, so, you know, Carlsberg. And, and, and of course a brand like Carlsberg can look back at its heritage and its founder, but you've got so many other brands that can do that, Bartweiser, or Heineken, so, you know, what, what does really kind of connect with consumers from that perspective, when everybody got the heritage, when everybody's talking, when you've got beer brands talking about that purpose and heritage. And I think the, the real pivot these days is really the brands that do understand that this is really not about necessarily just their purpose, but really aligning with my purpose. So what is it that you as an organization can do for me? What is it you can enable me to do? And I think that is the kind of the exciting thing that's happening right now is, is for those organizations who get it right and who is value driven, but, but really for them to understand how do you actually connect with, uh, with, with, with you and me around that kind of shared purpose. And I think that's the tough, the, 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 the tough things to solve. Um, 
Wow, uh, what brands are getting right. I think, you know, um, every, everybody talks about Unilever, and I think Unilever got something interesting going for it in the sense that um, they've, they've, um, they've uh, been good at, at uh, getting their portfolio right in terms of kind of ch churning some of those brands around and, and, and aligning that profit and, and, and purpose. Um, but I do think the real challenge actually comes from that, um, um, from kind of the bottom-up approach. I think all these exciting new startups, uh, I think those are the ones that get it right because it's 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 um, it it it's not like an afterthought. I think sometimes what happens with some of these big organisations is that it seems like an afterthought. When I meet some of these uh, social and environmental entrepreneurs that start exciting businesses, they are on purpose. I mean, they create a fashion business because they are fed up with the way that fast fashion is going. And, and that's what drives their ambition and the vision. And that's what they can connect with quite easily um, with, 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 with consumers. And I think that that's probably where I see a lot of the exciting stuff going on right now. I mean, one of the organizations I, I often talk about is, is uh, Wheelies. So it's a Swedish uh, coffee bike chain. And it was uh, started by a, a young Swedish uh, girl, I think she was 23 when she started the business, called Marie de la Croix. And she actually wanted to work for Starbucks and believed in Howard Schultz, you know, one uh, cup of coffee at a time and, and doing the, the whole community thing and their purpose, uh, but didn't get a job. Uh, at Starbucks, she got blue hair, so apparently, you know, race is fine, blue hair not so much. But so she didn't get that job, but that was good. So she set out to start this coffee business, organic coffee, coffee uh, bicycle business, and and her spiel is really going up against these big businesses and these big coffee chains and creating something that everybody can be part of. So rather than a big franchise like Starbucks, it's actually like a micro franchise. So if you're passionate about coffee, you can kind of be part of the Wheelies Revolution and you can start your own little coffee uh, coffee bicycle thing. And, and I think that's quite fascinating because of two things. First of all, if it's my business and I feel I'm part of, of this community, um, I'm quite sure that when I wake up in the morning I'll feel the pur pur purpose and the passion when I go to work. And if you go there and buy my coffee, it's my business. I'll, I'll, I'll be giving you the best, pro probably the best service you can get. And, and I mean, where would you feel the biggest sense of purpose when you go into a Starbucks and you buy the coffee off whatever's behind, you know, whoever's behind the counter and, and probably checking out the Instagram account while they're working there? Or when it's, when it's my own, again, a, a coffee business. So I think that's, that's where I see a lot of stuff happening. And I, I, I think that that is where, especially the younger generations, why they're so critical towards some of this purpose, um, purpose talk is that I think they look at purpose in a different way. I think they look at purpose um, um, in a much more person-to-person -person way. Because you have these big faceless, or faceless organizations, these big um, uh, kind of behemoths of multinationals, and it's difficult to kind of sense that same sort of nerve and, 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 and uh, and excitement and vision that you can when you go down and you and 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 you uh, and you meet some of these new exciting entrepreneurs that's doing this exciting stuff.